and welcome to the Bethel Church Podcast, located in the heart of the Black Hills. Our focus is to live, grow, love, and serve for the sole purpose to make Jesus known. You can be seated. Today is a good day. Amen? Amen. It's an extremely good day for me. My team won last night, (laughs) and my rival lost. The heavens opened up. Listen, before we jump into things this morning, I got a few announcements I want to share with you today. Uh, First off, our fall festival is coming up soon. How many is excited about our fall festival? Listen, if you weren't here last week, I shared with you, we had over 1,500 people show up last year. We were just a, it's just a great way to bless our community. A couple of things we need. If you would like to be a part of that, if you'd like to volunteer, let us know. You can go to our website and sign up there. Or if you would like to host a trunk. So bring your car out, decorate it, give out candy. Let's have a blast together. Let's have a lot of fun. So make sure you let us know we need volunteers. We need for that. Also, every week, remember last week, I asked you to bring one thing. What was it? Candy. Bring candy. Every week, try to bring a bag of candy. I don't care how big, how small it is. Bigger the better. But bring candy. We want to make sure that we have enough for everybody. So that's something that I want to ask you to do. Also, next Sunday night, everybody say next Sunday night. September 17th, prayer and worship night. Let's fill this room up, not for the sake of filling it up, but let's fill this room up for the sake of storming the gates of hell together. Amen? Amen. God, you've got to get more excited. I'm excited today. I don't know about you. we got to get excited together. Yeah, there we go. And listen, if you're new here, if, if maybe, maybe you haven't been here a long time or, or um, you, maybe you have and you just haven't gotten involved, I want to encourage you today during second service, I'm just announcing it because it's coming up, during second service today is Serve 101. So if you want to be part of that, make sure you go uh, right down in the fellowship hall and be a part of that. Let's get in the Word today, amen? amen. Over the past few weeks, uh, we've looked at this idea of serving other people. All right, serving others, we're called to serve. It's one of our values here. Serving is our calling. And, uh, and if we're truly saved, we will serve other people. I mean, that's just, that's just scripture. If we're truly saved, we will serve other people. The last two weeks, we looked at the Galatian Christians, all right? Mainly the Jewish Christians, the people of Galatia that were the Jews that had been uh, converted to Christianity. And, uh, and Paul talks in Romans about this idea of the Galatian believers or the Jewish believers and the Greek believers uh, all having to come to the same cross, all having to get saved, and all having the right to be saved and the opportunity to be saved. And then we see this weird thing with the Jewish Christians where they start creating this idea of this new gospel as Paul talks about it. It, They start taking the the law and they start blending it in with all this with the grace and they start saying okay well we're better uh, than them because we've been around longer and this was initially for us the Jewish people so the Gentiles should not be able to to have a part of this and if they do they've got to do this and they start creating all these rules by adding the law in and everything. But what they actually did was they created this impossibility, not just for the Gentiles, but for themselves. Because when you start adding the law and you start adding this stuff into the grace of Christ, how many know none of us can earn our way to heaven? You can't earn salvation. Salvation is, and I'm going to say this, I'm going to tread lightly on this, salvation is a free gift to a certain point, but it does cost you everything. It does cost you. The idea that Jesus died on the cross and rose again was free of charge to everybody. It it was was offered to everybody. But once you accept that, there are certain things when Jesus talks about taking up your cross daily and following me, he meant that. So it's something that does cost you when you come to Jesus. That's why it's not not this thing to be taken lightly. Oh, I got saved when I was real young and so I can live any way I want to. No, that's not what it's about. That's not what salvation is about. It will cost you. But the thing is, the cost is something that we should be honored to pay. I'm honored to live for Jesus. I want to live for Jesus. It's not something I have to do. It's something I want to do. I desire it because the closer I get to him and the more intimate my relationship gets with him, the more I want to serve him in every aspect of my life. So this all came after Paul told them that salvation was for everybody. And they didn't like that. So I've been thinking about those Jewish Christians and their attitude uh, towards the Gentiles and how 
I believe that sometimes we aren't much different. I was kind of doing an examination of my own heart and life, and sometimes I'm not much different than that. Can anybody agree with, with you with me on that? I mean, have you ever been there before where you just, I look at this and go, I'm, I'm not much different. I, I kind of sometimes create my own gospel too. You know, and, and I, I really want to do that. I know it's wrong, but, but grace covers it. I love that. Grace covers everything. And I start finding myself getting in this rut. See, whether it's people from different backgrounds or religious beliefs or convictions, sometimes we have tendencies to ostracize people that aren't like us. That's what the Jewish believers were doing in, in Galatians, in this portion of Scripture. They, weren't, or, or they were creating an impossible salvation for those who were not like them, and in turn, they were creating an impossible salvation experience for themselves. So they didn't realize that they were shooting themselves in the foot along the way. So today, I want to talk about serving in a different light. We've been talking about serving people and, and uh, how we're called to serve. That's, our, that's one of our values. We're called to this. We look at Scripture. Serving is obedience, and there's many ministries here that you can get involved in, that kind of thing. But today, I want to twist it a little bit, and I want to say, let's talk about serving God. Because I think if we're not serving God, we can't serve other people. It's hard to do that in love. So let's talk about serving God because we live in this selfie world, right? We live in this world where this is, the, this is, our, this is our bread and butter, right? We, if, if, if I'm not posting selfies, something, people check on you. You're, you know what I mean? I mean, if you're not putting a selfie up on Facebook like once or twice a week, at least people are calling check. Hey, are you okay? I haven't seen any selfies or I haven't seen any pictures lately. No, I'm good. I'm just taking a break because it's frying my brain. But we don't understand that because we live in this selfie world that says serve me. Right? We live in this serve me world. You ever gotten mad at a dry, in a, in a drive-thru? I found myself irritated the other day. I was at Starbucks. Right? And I was, I was going through Starbucks and I, I'm talking to the, the, the girl in the box, right? The speaker person. And they always, they always ask you your name. So I like to mess with them with that. And they say, what's your name? I'm like, Keith, what's your name? And it throws them off. So try it. Because <laughs> they're not expecting that at all. But I go through there and I said, now don't make fun of me, all right, guys? You, you know, I'll order a pumpkin spice chai tea. <laughs> Manly. <laughs> pumpkin spice chai tea. And she says the the." Uh, Abominable words. Sir, we are out of pumpkin. <laughs> and I, I caught myself. Get, I literally got mad. I'm like, it is pumpkin spice season. And you, you're announcing it on all your commercials. Why do you not have this drink from Jesus? <laughs> What's your problem? And I'm, and I'm like, fine. Just give me a caramel latte thanks <laughs> drive up to the car and I'm like I'm not even leaving a tip like it was the girl's fault that their truck didn't come in on time to bring their pumpkin sp stuff for me because I'm in a selfie world and they should have served me I wanted pumpkin that day and they didn't have it and I was irritated you ever been there before amen. yeah some of you are like some of you guys in here you're like I'm not saying amen to that <laughs> and then secret you're drinking pumpkin spice lattes. You're just not telling anybody. We live in this serve me world. In Isaiah chapter 6, we see this story of how the prophet Isaiah, through a vision from God, if you've never read the story, it's amazing, but through this vision of God, he actually begins his ministry, all right? And uh, so, so here's what's going on, kind of a background of that. After a 52-year reign uh, of peace, all right, peace for 52 years over the people of Judah uh, and Israel in that area, King Uzziah died. Now, King Uzziah became king when he was 16 years old. How many know 16-year-olds that you would anoint king tomorrow? <laughs> Days were different back then. But he was 16 years old. He was a king, 52 years, he dies, all right? He had leprosy, he dies, um, and it's the same year that Isaiah begins his prophetic ministry. So we see something going on. So God, God 
God knows what's going to happen before it happens, and he's preparing people for what's about to happen. He's a preparer. God prepares people, and if we will listen to him, he'll prepare us for what's coming. So he, he's got this preparation thing going on. King Uzziah dies. Isaiah's there. Isaiah sees this vision from God. And God had a message to deliver to the nation of Judah during the time of mourning for their king. And he wanted someone to send with this message to deliver it to the nation. So Isaiah sees this vision and he sees the heavenly realms. He sees the train of God's robe fill the temple. He sees all the majesty in the temple of God. He's seeing this incredible, this incredible sight. And then, in Isaiah chapter 6, verse 8, God asks a question to Isaiah. He says this, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? It's kind of one of those questions that you ask when the only person standing in the room is like, hey, who can I get to do this? <laughs> Nobody else is in the room, so I'm asking you, who can I get to do this? Like, I want you to say me, you know? So God says, here's all this vision. You see the glory of God. You see who I am. Who shall I send? Who's going to go to deliver this message? And Isaiah immediately, without hesitation, begins to shout. I, I picture this man. He begins to shout and scream. And he says, here am I, send me. Anybody, anybody heard the story before? He's, he's literally in the presence of God, and he's jumping up and down and said, here am I, send me. Here I am. God, I'm right in front of you. Here I am. Send me. This has to be one of my favorite pieces of scripture. It depicts a man who just wanted to be used of God in whichever way possible. The message wasn't entirely clear of what message that Isaiah was about to give to these people, but Isaiah, throwing caution to the wind, could care less what the message was because when God uses you, it doesn't matter what the message is as long as it's from him. And so he's like, okay, God, I'll do it. Here I am. I'm right in front of you. Send me. Turns out he became a great prophet to the nation of Israel. But that ministry, that blessing would have never happened had Isaiah not been insistent on God using him. Right? Never would have. So God had a response for Isaiah and for anyone here who uses those words. If you stand before God today and you say, here I am, send me. This is God's response. Serve me. That's the response. Serve me. There's so many elaborate plans that God has, so many cool things that God wants to do through us. But if we don't get to that first phase and just say, here I am, send me, what can I do? And God says, serve me. And we don't serve him. We miss out on what God has for us. We'll miss it. If you're like most people, the thought of serving God of being the hands and feet of Jesus himself probably prompts feelings of inadequacy or inferiority. Anybody ever felt that way before? God, there's no way God's going to use me. I'm like, there's no way God's going to use me to pastor a church. There's no way. I'm not qualified. There's no way God's going to use me to minister to people at my workplace because I'm not qualified to do that. They have so much more wisdom and so much more knowledge than me. Listen, when the wisdom of God comes in and anoints you, it doesn't matter what's around you. It doesn't matter who's there. If God wants to use you, let him, and he wants to use every one of us. So we might have said to the Lord, I, here I am, send me, but to actually step forward and do that, it's like stepping out of the boat onto the water. It's a huge step of faith to obey the words of the Lord saying, serve me. I think about Peter. Peter's in the boat. He sees Jesus out on the lake. Remember the story? He sees Jesus out on the lake, and he says, oh, wait a minute. Everybody's like, that's a ghost. That's a ghost. And he says, no, it's me. It's okay. It's just me. It's Jesus. I'm, I'm with you guys. I, you know me. And then Peter says, okay, if it's you, tell me to come, come out to where you're at. And at that moment, Jesus says, Come. Read the scripture. That's all he says. says come, come on. And then what you see is you see Peter step out of the boat immediately and start walking towards the Lord. He starts walking towards him. Now, here's the thing, and I've, I've told you this before, but Jesus, I mean, Peter didn't step out on water that day. We look at it as Peter did this miraculous thing and he walked on water. Gee, Peter didn't walk on water in the spiritual realm that day. He walked on the word of the Lord. 
God said, come, and it wasn't until Jesus told him to come could Peter actually step out and walk on the water. So it was the word of God. So when Jesus or when God says, who can I send? Who is willing to serve? Who is willing to pour into the lives of some little kid in the nursery? Who's willing to pour into some life of some teenager that's got a lot of problems? Who's willing to do that? And we say, here I am, send me. And he says, go. Then you've been at that point anointed to go and do the ministry of the Lord. This past Wednesday night, the last two Wednesday nights, Youth ministry right here in this room. 11 students have said yes to Jesus in the past two Wednesday nights. One girl, I'm going to tell this story. One girl, when she, was, when she was with one of the leaders, she said, I hurt myself all the time and I can't stop without God's help. I need him in my life. That was her story. And I'm thinking, God is calling us to reach those who are hurting. And he's anointing us for that service. But you can't serve those people until we realize what it means to serve God. Amen? Amen. So how can God use anything I have to offer? What do I have that God needs or that he can use? There's nothing special about me that God needs. I think about those words and I remember those words of Isaiah that says, I'm a man of unclean lips and I dwell among people with unclean lips. Absolutely. God still used him. He cleansed him. He set him free. He broke the chains. He broke whatever was going on. He set him free of it, cleansed him, used him. But we got to be willing to step out in that. Many people feel like an old, outdated garage sale. You ever felt like that before? Put ourselves out there. People come by, act casually interested. Then they turn and they walk away thinking, there's nothing here that I want. You're not the right tool. You're not the right piece of luggage, whatever it may be. You're not the right one. Is this what the Lord does when we step into his presence? If we go to God and we say, God, here I am, I put myself out there, it's not like God walks through a garage sale and looks at us and goes, no, you're just old, you're used, nobody needs you anymore. No, he doesn't do that. He doesn't say, I can't use you. Why is that? Because we are his redeemed, forgiven people, because we are spiritually gifted people, and since we are redeemed and spiritually gifted, we are equipped to serve him. You don't have to have special talents to serve God. You just have to have a special ability to say, here I am, send me. That's all you need. See, God never looks for those who are qualified by man's standards because man's qualifications for ministry are not the same as God's. Isaiah, without the supernatural power of God in his life, would have never been qualified to step into that which God had called him to do. Neither would Moses, neither would Noah, neither would Joseph, neither would Mary, the mother of Jesus. They would have never been able to do that without the supernatural presence of God in their life. The disciples, anybody else you can think of, big name preachers, whatever. God's qualifications rest upon our willingness and our desire to do his will and serve him. When we think about spiritual gifts, because spiritual gifts... um, are serving the house, serving the kingdom. We often let our minds wander. We go, we go weird with it sometimes. So today I want to look at a spiritual gift, as, uh, as the Apostle Paul mentioned. So if you have your Bibles, turn with me, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. It's 11 verses. I'm going to throw them up on the screen. We can see those there. But if you have your Bibles, make sure you, you open them up and, um, and read along. So this is what it says. Now about the gifts of the Spirit. Brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, somehow or other, you were influenced and led astray to mute idols. Therefore, I want you to know that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus be cursed, and no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. So it's a little preliminary teaching there by Paul. And then he goes on to say, there are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but all of them, but in all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one, there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom. 
to another the message of knowledge by the means of the same spirit, to another faith by the same spirit, to another gifts of healing by that one spirit, to another miraculous powers, to another prophecy, to another distinguishing between spirit, which is discernment, uh, to another speaking in different kinds of tongues, and to still another the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of of one and the same spirit, and he distributes them to each one just as he determines. So he's talking to the church in Corinth, and this is a church uh, that is kind of abusing a lot of the the gifts and that kind of thing, going a little crazy with it. And so Paul's like, okay, I'm going to give you some structure here. Now understand this, when Paul is speaking here, he's speaking to the church body. He's not speaking to an individual gift at this point, okay? He's and, And it says right here, he distributes each one of them just as he determines. That kind of jumped off the page at me in verse 11. This is not the only place that Paul talks about gifts or or the Bible talks about gifts. In Romans 12, he also mentions gifts such as serving, prophecy, giving, leading, mercy. I mean, there are a lot of these. Administration, there's, there's a lot of these gifts. There isn't just one list But there are many gifts that God gives to his people. Now, the reason I read this scripture, I'm not going to dig into every one of these uh, these things that he's mentioned in this gift of the Spirit. We talked about that a few weeks or a few months ago, so go back and watch that. But what I wanted to do is make sure you understood that there are multiple gifts given to multiple people. It's not just like we have one thing that God wants us to do. or, Or like you have one thing, you have one thing, you have one thing. We work together as a collective body of Christ and they all work together. That is the point in in the gifts for the body of Christ. So there isn't just one list, but God distributes them amongst his people for the work of the kingdom, for service. So spiritual gifts are designed and assigned by God himself. In fact, we don't even have a choice in how we are gifted or when those gifts are given to us. Okay? Now, 1 Peter 4.10 says this, As each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's very grace. Now, I want to take a moment, if I can this morning, and get a little practical with you, okay? So to understand these better, I'm going to categorize them for you. So here's there are three uh, categories that I want to share with you. First one is this, the miraculous gifts. Okay, miraculous gifts, I'm going to put them on the screen so you can see them. This is tongues, interpretation of tongues, prophecy, healing, that kind of thing. Those are miraculous gifts. Then there are speaking gifts, okay? And that's teaching, preaching, evangelism, counseling, those kind of things. Those are the speaking gifts. Then the third one is action gifts. What is action gifts? It's things that we actually put into play that we can actually do ourselves and some people are gifted. I'm not, I'm not greatly gifted in administration, but I know other people are. That's why I have other people in my life that are gifted in that, you know, because I'm not, that's not my strong suit. I think about Pastor Beth is like, you know, like she's on it. That's not me. I'm like, hey, let's go. She's like, no, hold up. Okay. Administration is not my strength, but it's hers, but I have strengths too. You see what I'm saying? Like, you may not be gifted in kids' ministry, but this person over here is. That doesn't mean that you're not gifted in something else. So we, God uses us all together. So helping, mercy, administration, giving, serving, these are all gifts of action. Okay, now to help you, uh, I want to encourage you, uh, this is where the practical part comes in, to take a survey, all right? Don't go to Google and Google a survey, all right? I'm going to give you one. So there's a QR code right there. Take your phones, stick it up there, copy it, whatever you got to do, and these, these will help you. I'm not saying that this is, this is the throne of God of all gifts. I'm saying this one will help you in determining things. I've taken it, so I'm going to give you like, let's leave it up there for like 10 seconds, and let anybody, I see phones going up, that's awesome. I'll smile pretty next time, but um, make sure you do it, because it's fun. It's a fun way to really see yourself, too. I took this gift this week, and this is my results. This is what I got right here. So I'm going to put that up on the screen. There's mine, okay? That's, they give you top three when you do it. That's your top three. Obviously, administration is not on there, right? It is not on there. 
Everything about me is ministry. I just want to do ministry. I just want I, I remember when I first when I first became pastor and we were in a board meeting. Sorry, board members, don't fire me. We were, we were doing it, and it was right before we were doing a transition thing. Uh, and, I, and I said, I, I was listening to all this stuff, and I'm like, man, can I just, like, do ministry and not worry about this? Uh, you know, because it just wasn't fun for me, you know? It's like, this is not my thing, but these are my thing. And I'm passionate about those three, and so it made sense to me. And you take the test honestly, then it will honestly come out to where those giftings are and where your strengths are really is what it is. It's really a strength finder. So those are mine. That's just a fun thing to do. But, uh, so make sure, you know, whenever you can, do that. It's a lot of things. But here's a few things about spiritual gifts I want to share with you today. All right? And I know I'm running low on time, but I'm going to go through them. Everybody good? Yeah. All right. Kids church, you Good. Good. That means they are. All right. <laughs> Number one, all right? few things about spiritual gifts. Number one, a spiritual gift is a supernatural empowerment for all believers. For all believers. The very existence of spiritual gifts indicates that we are not intended by God to be independent and isolated from the church. We are not intended to be isolated. These gifts are functional, and they are intended by God himself to help us get busy in serving him through the body of Christ, which is the church. We serve others. We serve him. We serve the church. We serve him. We get involved. We serve him. We love on people. We serve him. It all comes back to how much do you want to serve him? Here I am, send me. Number two, spiritual gifts are given in variety. God didn't create everyone the same. If he did, this world would be boring or nobody would be left because they'd all have a personality that would kill each other, right? You, you don't want that. So his understanding of us is far greater than we even understand. The list in Corinthians is not intended to be a comprehensive list, and I think that a lot of giftings God gives us are not even mentioned. There are things that you're, that you're gifted in that may not even be mentioned in these lists because there are so many. We're such intricate people. We're such incredible creations that there are so many talents that people have. In this list, most of the gifts, it can't be done without the supernatural manifestation of, of the Holy Spirit. The manifestation of the, the supernatural gifts can't be done without him. What this whole idea of gifts tells me is that ministries within the church most likely won't look alike. Okay? There is a value placed on variety, a value. How many have multiple kids? Are they exactly the same? I ain't got to tell you mine aren't. They're not exactly the same. I've got an angel in my oldest, 20-year-old right here, married to a great young man, the great family. You see what I'm doing here? Okay. Awesome. Then I've got Eve, who is the joy of my life who is the fountain of youth for me. She was like, man, your beard's getting gray. I'm like, yeah, it started about eight years ago. <laughs> she's so cool. Keep her in prayer, by the way. This Wednesday, she's having surgery this Wednesday. Uh, she has some mouth stuff she's going to have surgery on and being put to sleep and all that. She's scared, so keep her in your prayers. But anyway, I've got different kids. We're all different. We're all to, called to serve differently. I'm still amazed that God can empower someone like me to serve him. You ever been amazed by God in that? Something special happens in my heart every time I stand on this platform and preach the word. Something special. I leap. I went to bed late last night. I was tired. I was zombified this morning when I got up. But right now I'm like energized because this is my passion. This is what I like to do. Knowing my faults and my tendencies and my fear are all things God knows and sees and still chooses to use me. Still chooses it. He knows your faults. He knows what you're not good at, but he still uses you. The same is true in whichever area he has chosen you to serve. He has empowered you by his spirit. If you just say, here I am, send me. The third and last one. 
Spiritual gifts should create unity and edification. They should create. Ministries may not look the same, but we're in this together. We're in this together. The very reason Paul wrote this in 1 Corinthians was because of the disunity and disruption the misuse of spiritual gifts were creating within the church. Unity doesn't equal uniformity. Okay? Unity doesn't equal uniformity. It does, however, promote the acceptance that others might be wired differently and can serve God in a different way than you. Think about worship. I'm, a, I'm Southern, demonstrative. I like to lift my hands. I like to get excited. I like to do that stuff. Some people just sit there. People from South Dakota. They worship carrying a TV. Right? So, but I'm not more spiritual than they are. We just worship differently. We're just created differently, right? We just have different personalities, and that's okay. We have people who minister to youth and kids and other adults. While we are not all personally called to all of those, we should have unity and edification when we come together. Just because I may not be called to work in kids' ministry, that doesn't mean that I can't shout when a little one experiences God. Right? We are in this together. I'm going to close with this, I promise. Our spiritual gift and giftings are not given to promote ourselves, but to build the church. We should enjoy Serving, absolutely. But we don't serve because of the warm fuzzies that it brings. That's not why we serve. That was the problem in Corinth. They used their gifts to build up themselves and gain popularity and control. That church became a self-driven, competitive environment. We are called to be selfless in a selfish world. Let's together give and serve in a way that don't require recognition, recognition or earthly reward, but rather build the church and watch what God can do through us. Amen? Amen? Let's pray. Jesus, we love you. God, I'm thankful for your church. I'm thankful for the church, God, and what you've created and what you've called us to, Lord. May we all be able to stand in your presence and say, here I am, send me, use me. In whichever way you want to use me, use me, God, because I just want to serve you so that I can serve others better. And Lord, today as we all go our separate ways, whatever's going on this afternoon in our lives, God, help us to have somebody that puts somebody in our path that we can serve even for a moment and show them the love of God. In Jesus' name, everybody said, amen. Amen. amen, amen. If you would like to learn more about our church or give to our ministry, please visit our website at Bethel.ag.